Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. Well, this is a little bit of a different setup than you've seen before. You're like, why are you standing there with an AR-15 inside of your garden? You know, I, I made a comment recently on Facebook. I said, gardening is like war. When I was in the military, um, I was deployed to Macedonia for about six months. Uh, I was in the infantry and uh, we had observation posts on the Serbian border. And we set up, you know, on our observation post, concertina wire and a perimeter around our observation post. And uh, it seemed like we had this connex on si inside of our observation post, and that's where we kept all of our food. And it wasn't like a, a very violent place. It was not an ongoing war that was going on, but we were infantry soldiers, and we were in a sort of forward area where conflict had taken place in the past. But it wasn't a heightened sense of security, you know, all the time. But we did, these village kids, a lot of times these village kids would come into, they would get underneath the wire or they would break through the wire in certain places around the perimeter and they would try to break into the connex uh, to steal food. And, and, you know, it was not like they were starving. They had their farms and they weren't starving people at all. But, um, but they just, they wanted, the, they knew we had Coca-Cola. That was the big thing they really wanted. They, they knew the U.S. soldiers had Coca-Cola and they wanted to break into that connex because they knew that's where we stored the Coca-Cola that would come in uh, from the shipment, our food shipments. Anyway, um, you know, w w as an infantry soldier, I learned how to make a perimeter and to patrol that perimeter. And gardening is really the same way. You have a lot of adversaries that are always trying to infiltrate your garden and trying to destroy your plants or eat your plants. And it's a constant battle. And I hear story after story in the comments or on Facebook or social media, emails that come in and say that they've tried gardening and they're just super frustrated that they can't get things to grow because something has come in and destroyed their crop or a pest or an insect has come in and and destroyed some of their plants and and so it's very frustrating for a lot of people and you have to understand that when you garden especially like we do where we garden for our food i mean this is our livelihood we i mean the tomato plants you see around me are going to make lots of salsa and they're going to go into our storage and you know we're going to can that stuff and we're going to eat on it all year round and so uh, the squash that we're growing it's very vital because we eat on that squash all year round. The potatoes, uh, you know, the, um, the, the, the cabbage turn, is, get, turns into, into uh, we save the cabbage and we turn that into um, uh, sauerkraut uh, and, and, you know, ferment that. And that's storage food that, that we let, use all year round. So it's very important that our crops survive and that nothing hurts them. And so there are a lot of things. You have deer that come into the, that, I mean, they're hopping over the fence. Uh, you have groundhogs. Uh, you have pack rats. You have um, aphids. You have all kinds of different insects that are constantly attacking your plants. And so you're 100% on the alert to try to make sure that you're walking your garden every day to make sure that these things are not, you know, harming your plants. And the reason I have this, uh, this is a, it's got a night vision uh, monocular on it. And uh, I'll come out here sometimes at night, you know, and I'll see a rabbit, you know, that's trying to get into my fence line. And most of my fence line is pretty secure. Uh, most of the time a rabbit won't get through the fence, but sometimes it does. And uh, if you don't think rabbits can't climb fences, they can. So uh, rabbits will try to get in here. And if I see a rabbit, it shows up very clearly in my scope and I can take it out. And so this is a nine millimeter AR that I can use for that. And then other things too, groundhog. I saw a groundhog out here the other day, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but you know, there are definitely things who are out here trying to eat your plants down. And so I thought I'd walk you through some of the ways we defend our garden, and then uh, show you how you can do the same thing for yours. But understand that this is an ongoing thing that you must maintain. All, you know, most of the time when you, have, when you have your garden, it's not something you can just go out and check on once a week. Because if you do that, if you work a nine to five job and you think when you get home from work, you're just gonna go in and put your feet up on the recliner, uh, and your garden's going to be okay, that's just not, you're, you're not going to grow something, and then you're going to be frustrated at the end of the day because what you tried to grow just didn't, you know, didn't work out. And so that, that's just not the way, the way to do things. So anyway, I'm going to walk you through a number of things. One of the first things I'm going to talk to you about before we get started is that when you grow plants, you need to grow at least about 25% more than you think you're going to need. So um, I try to grow about 50 tomato plants a year because I know I'm not gonna need that many. But if I lose 25% of those tomato plants or 30% of those tomato plants to different funguses or uh, some sort of uh, aphid gets in and destroys a couple of them or you come out one day and a tomato hornworm has just wrecked a, a plant, you know, you're gonna lose a few of these 
if that happens, you know, you're not, you're not out of food. You've got, you've got enough tomato plants to make up for that where you can correct that deficiency or the problem or whatever's going on real quick um, and, and still be okay. Uh, even if you do lose those plants, you're still going to make out with tomatoes. So I tell people to grow at least 25, 30% more than you think you're going to need. If you can have an extra maybe, you know, 10 plants, um, that, you know, if you, do have, if you do have an abundance at the end of the year and everything goes great, you can give some away to friends and neighbors and family or whatever. Uh, but always grow more than you think you're going to need so that if things do happen, and they will, you're going to be, uh, you're going to end up on top. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me show you some of these things. Hey guys, so I'm in my greenhouse right now. This year in my greenhouse, I have killed three pack rats. And these things are really devastating to you, you, the things that you have growing. They'll come in and you know, they don't even eat the plant. The pack rat will just cut down the plant and he'll go stack it somewhere. And so I have found these, uh, he was coming through and chewing down some of my onions and my carrots and things like that. And he wasn't even eating them. He was just stacking them up in a corner. I mean, if, it's really bad that he, he chews my stuff down, but the fact that he doesn't even eat it, it just made me even more mad, so uh, more angry. So uh, let me tell you how I've dealt with this. If you haven't seen my video on the pack rat, killing the greenhouse pack rat, I'll put it up at the top of the screen so you can see it if you want to after this video is over. But uh, I have found that pack rats really like shiny things. If you have a pack rat problem in your greenhouse or in your garden and you're, and you're finding things that uh, are just being really chewed down and maybe you find it stacked up in a place where the pack rat has stored it, try this. There's one of my traps. It's a 110 conibear and it's set up with uh, some tinsel. And that tinsel is really nice and shiny and will get his attention really easily. And so this works, folks. Put your, uh, get a 110 conibear trap. You can find these on eBay. It's called a 110 conibear, 110 conibear, C-O-N-I-B-E-A-R. And uh, they're not very expensive. You can find them on eBay. And you put some tinsel in it and that thing will go for that tinsel. And uh, you can, and what I've also done before too, works very well is to put on that trigger peanut butter. Peanut butter works just as good. They love the peanut butter, but they really like shiny things. So if you can get him to mess with that, that tinsel right there, he's a goner and you got the end of your pack rat problem. But this is one of the things I have to put up with you know, when I'm gardening and you know, I do you know, incur some losses in my garden and in my greenhouse because of pack rats. Um, you know, I just shot one the other day. People have said, why are you gardening with a, with a sidearm on your hip? Well, you know, I saw I was in I was filling up the water tanks with Tim the other day and there was a pack rat sitting right there um, down where the water tanks were. And I pulled out my pistol and shot him and, you know, one shot gone for the pack rat. And I keep snake shot as my first round in my nine millimeter. So, you know, it, uh, you know, guns and gardening, they go together. OK, they really do. So if you have to, you know, that's just what you have to do, you know. So but that's if you're looking for a way to dispatch a pack rat, that's a really good way unless you can get a shot off at them, which isn't likely. So this is one of our uh, lettuce beds and um, we've been eating off this for quite a bit. We love this lettuce. It's really tasty. Jamie loves the lettuce. And so, um, but one day you can kind of see some of the damage here. One day I came out here and this was all mowed down. It was one day recently. And so now it's starting to recover, it's starting to grow back a little bit. But I was like, what is going on? Then I walked out here in the middle of the day once and I saw this groundhog race across my garden and head towards the fence line. It was too quick for me to get off a shot or to pull my, pull my sidearm, but um, I made note of that and I looked for that fence line to see where he was coming through. Let me go show you. Here's his hole right there at the fence line and you notice I have another conibear right over the top of the hole where he's been coming in underneath my fence line. And this is what's called a 330 conibear, 330 conibear. And so you can find these also on eBay. Uh, they're really popular on trapper forums and so they work really well. Uh, depending on what state you live in and what laws that apply, you're not allowed to have these outside of water, but I think where we're at, it's okay. Um, but this, con this guy, he came through, I set this kind of bear up, and he came up through that hole the next day after I saw him, and he got his, I had this thing down too low. It was down like this, and he hit the trigger, and the trigger was on the other side. And so we hit the trigger before he got into it, before he committed to come up through the hole. And what happened was he got his nose caught in it. And there was, I mean, you can see the, the leaves and stuff that was down here. It was a big ruckus. A lot of mud was turned up. He got his nose caught in that and he wrestled free, which is very unlikely for a, for a conibear. Uh, but he, pe many animals do not escape from a conibear once you're, once you're caught. It's usually an instant kill. But he got out. He got out and he hasn't been back since. It's been about five days since he got his nose caught in that. 
and he hasn't been back since. He learned his lesson. I have since gone out and looked for his hole out there, and I think I found it, but it's under a bunch of brush where I cannot place another one of these kind of bears. Um, but uh, if he does come back, or if I find another hole in the garden fence line, I can put another kind of bear uh, to deter him coming in. But again, this is just another thing. I mean, that, that groundhog got into my garden and basically decimated one of my salad beds. And, you know, that's food that's, that's not going into my family, you know, so I, I, gotta, I gotta do something about that. You know, it's, not, it's either me or the groundhog and it ain't gonna be me. So the groundhog has to go. So this is just another one of the ways where your garden comes under attack and you have to do battle. You have to go out and, and effectively eliminate uh, whatever adversary is coming in to try and destroy that which is keeping your, you know, feeding your family. So there it is. The 330 kind of bear is a very effective tool. If you try it, I think you're gonna have success. But also, just make sure you be, you be uh, aware of the laws that are in your area. Hey, Zach, so what about, like, uh, insect pest pressures? You know, things like that. You have aphids, you have all kinds of insects that come in. Um, you have b uh, potato beetles, lots of insects that can come in and really destroy a garden. Tomato hornworms, things like that. What do I use to deter insect pressures? Um, it's very simple. I have done videos on this before. It's the neem oil and Dr. Bronner's sal sud soaps. Um, this stuff is great. It's, it's biodegradable. It's completely natural cleaner. Um, it's a, just a really good soap, really easy soap. It's not going to harm your plants at all. Um, and so I would really advise going for the Dr. Brown or Sal Suds. They make different types of soaps. Uh, the one is recommended is called the Sal Suds Biodegradable Cleaner. And then the neem oil, which is 100% organic, natural product from the neem tree in India. Uh, it's a bunch of the seeds, I believe, that are ground up and the oil saved. And insects can't stand it. Um, they said that they would have uh, basically locust swarms that would come through India and they would devour just all of the plant life in an entire area, but they wouldn't touch the neem tree at all. The neem tree would just remain untouched. And so uh, people discovered that this neem oil works really well as an organic, natural method to deter insects from harming your garden and harming your plants. And so the neem oil and the, or the organic uh, Dr. Bronner Sal Suds, um, it works really good together. What I do is I get a one gallon container, I get a one gallon container, and then I put a tablespoon of each. And sometimes if, if it's a heavy pest pressure that I'm discovering, like potato beetles, I'll use two tablespoons of each, two tablespoons of the neem oil and two tablespoons of the sal suds inside a one gallon con container sprayer, something, a sprayer that you would find at your local Walmart in the garden section, something like that. Put in two tablespoons each, and that will absolutely uh, do very well at, at you know, getting rid of moths and worms, the worms that would eat your, your brassicas and your cabbages and things like that, uh, your aphid problem, or, or potato beetles especially. This does an excellent job at getting rid of those pressures. Uh, so people ask me, hey, what do you do about insects? This is what I do. I've been using it now for three years. It works really, it's an outstanding product. It works really good. And I buy it at a place called boogiebrew.net. On the webs on the internet, it's boogiebrew.net. Check it out if you want some, uh, some really good, effective insect control for your garden. So there you go. Your, your garden is a battlefield. You have to understand that. It's something you need to be vigilant about. It's something you need to monitor. And, you know, if you put in practice uh, just this attitude of, listen, you have to maintain it yourself. You have to be hands-on with it. And, you know, go ahead and plant more plants, knowing that the enemy is going to, in fact, take down some of your plants. You're going to lose some plants to pest pressures, to groundhogs, to moles, to whatever. And then you plant more than you know you're going to need so that if, if, you're, if you lose a few battles in the war, you're still going to come out on top. So I hope this video has been entertaining for you. Uh, good luck in your gardening. It's springtime. Summer is getting ready to set in. Our plants are coming up like crazy. And we're going to have a good garden this year. Hope you do too. We'll see you next time on American Homestead. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button below the video. It really means a lot to us. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now you can support an American homestead by becoming a patron. Visit patreon.com slash an American homestead to see all the benefits of becoming a patron of our channel. You'll get access to private videos, pictures, and even live question and answer sessions that you can participate in. Some patrons will even receive free gifts throughout the year from the homestead. 
visit patreon.com slash an american homestead to check it out and see the rewards of supporting our channel